Hello and welcome again to this new YouTube session. The topic discussion today is the diaphragm, that is the thoracoabdominal diaphragm. My name is Dr. Ngit Khandelwal, MBBS MS Anatomy, Educator of Anatomy in our Anacademy platform. Let us see a few points of the Anacademy. The benefits of the plus subscription, the iconic subscription over here, and the neat PG combat, note the date, that is on 10th of October, 11 in the morning. One hour, lot of scholarships to be won over here. All the best. Then we have the raise a hand feature. Exam day, the uh, grand test for the INICT monthly, note down the date, 17th of October, time is 2 to 5 p.m. Then we have the special class features, have a look at that also. Then we have the whole question bank over here. And congratulations to all the students who cleared the NEED PG and also especially to those who cleared it and uh, we are very lucky to have them. Then these are all the new batches that are coming from the 6th of October for FMG, NEED PG, INICT and the clinical cases batch. Apart from this, you can look for the subscription. You get two options going for the iconic that is an academy in prep letter or simply an academy plus. And you can also use the code that is Dr. Ankit, my name over here with the YT for the YouTube. If you want some extra discount, you can use this code. Okay, let's come to the topic. The topic of discussion today is the diaphragm. Diaphragm are many here. We will talk mainly of the biggest, the largest diaphragm that is a thoraco abdominal diaphragm. Thoraco abdominal diaphragm. Now diaphragm is a group of muscles that we all know. The speciality of diaphragm is that the muscles are peripheral in that tendon is centrally located. So peripherally it has all the attachment from the bones, anteriorly it has the attachment coming from the sternum, from the sides it has attachment, the diaphragm I am talking of from the costal cartilage or the ribs over here and behind it has the attachment from the lumbar vertebrae. vertebrae. So everywhere the muscles are coming, 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 coming from all the parts. So peripheral it is muscular, but in the center it will have some tripod shape, shaped central tendon over here. Okay, tripod leaf shape. That is a peculiar feature. But is it straight? No, it is not straight. As we have already seen in the thoracic cage and thoracic wall, that if you look at a lateral view, then laterally, if this is the anterior part, that is the posterior part, this will be the sternum, that will be the thoracic vertebrae. Diaphragm is like this. So it is posteriorly, it is located lower down, attached to the lumbar vertebrae is mainly L1, L2, may go to L3. Anteriorly, there is only the lower part of the sternum, there is no bone below it. Obviously, it is to the ziphoid process. On the sides, you have all the ribs over here, mainly from the, because you know that the 7th rib goes, then the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, then 11th and 12th over here. So these are the ribs which will be giving off the muscle, muscle fibers from the lateral aspect. That is the whole picture. Until it is higher up, posterior it is lower down, and you have a central dome over here. Now, obviously, you have two domes of diaphragm, the right and left side. You have on the right side as well as on the left side the domes of diaphragm. So, obviously, the right dome of the diaphragm you see over here will be slightly higher up because of the underlying pressure of the liver. This is the diaphragm anteriorly. If you look at the diaphragm from anteriorly, it is like this. This is where the ziphoid process is giving the origin. This is for all where the ribs are giving its origin and behind you can imagine the lumbar vertebrae over here. This is the diaphragm which you see. If you remove everything, only the diaphragm is left, this will be the part. So diaphragm, why are we calling it thoracoabdominal? Obviously separating thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. So does anything pass? Many things pass. Not any but many. There are three major openings. Apply the common sense. Blood vessel is coming, aorta has to go down. Food is coming, has to go down. Luckily, the lungs finish over here, else the trachea bronchi may also have to go down. So basically, aorta and esophagus. But you have a heart over here, which, will, which would like to receive the blood from the lower part. So IVC is going over. So three major openings. What are three major openings? IVC, esophagus and aorta. Three major openings over here. And there are other minor openings that we will subsequently see. But look over here. If we go, come back to this figure, we all know that somewhat over anteriorly, this is the location for the heart. Right? Therefore, IVC will be coming over here, literally. We know from here the arch of aorta, A on the descending aorta goes like this. Therefore, the aorta opening will be over here. So, what I mean to say is IVC opening is present anteriorly. The aortic opening is present where posteriorly and in between you have the food pipe going down. So, in between you have the esophageal opening which is somewhere in the between. Why I am saying between and all? The well, reason is the diaphragm is not straightforward, it is placed like this anterior to posterior. 
So the more anterior the opening, the more higher up it is. The more posterior the opening, the more low down it is. Therefore, IVC opening is at vertebral level T8 around. Aortic opening is most posteriorly at T12. Somewhere in between, so we go with the T10. Common sense. There are various mnemonics over here, but still, common sense prevails. Understand the basic concept behind it. Three major openings are these. These are three major openings. Then if we come back to this image over here, here is what we were discussing, the same thing. But this is the anterior view, this is a lateral view. The same thing which I am trying to make. So, heart if I again make over here, the IVC opens over here. The esophagus is coming down over here. And the aorta is coming down over here. So, it is T8, T8, then this is around T10 and this is around T12 over here. Basic idea. Three major openings. Other things will pass through it that we will subsequently see. Okay. Now, let us move forward a little bit. What is this over here? All the openings. All the openings. Don't get worried by this. Imagine you are looking at the diaphragm from below. That is from the abdominal cavity. This is obviously the anterior side. That is the posterior side. This will be the right side. That will be our left side. Okay. This is the sternum. So, sternal fibers. That is all the 7, 8. These are all the numbers of the ribs. Costal fibers are coming. Costal attachment. Here behind you have the lumbar vertebrae. These are the crura or the crust of the of the diaphragm attached to the lumbar vertebrae that is obviously posteriorly you can see all the muscle fibers over here and they meet this is a part of the central tendon which is on to which sits the pericardium so pericardium fibrous one and the central tendon they are also having a common embryological origin septum transversum but let us see various openings the major openings first of all so obviously if the heart is sitting over here the opening should be of ivc common sense if the heart is sitting over here ivc need to enter into the heart the esophagus opening is going slide to the left side and it passes through the it pierces the muscular uh, the muscular part of the diaphragm this is the esophageal opening vertebral level you know that is around t10 t10 over here t10 this is around t8 over here and obviously behind now this aortic opening it does not pierce the diaphragm it actually passes between the two crusts of the diaphragm so actually it is passing behind this part that is known as a median arcuate ligament this part is known as median arcuate ligament you have two arcuate ligaments medial lateral psoas major quadratus lumborum their upper part medial lateral arcuate ligaments over here in the midline you have the median n n for n for no okay so there's a median arcuate ligament behind this passes the aortic opening does not perforate the diaphragm it passes behind the diaphragm three major openings over here and posterior this will be the abdominal muscles posterior abdominal muscles here the psoas major quadratus lumborum and their upper margin are medial lateral arcuate ligament oh, these are the major openings so major openings keep an idea what is passing through them now, the other thing what passes along with it so we have seen over here that there is an esophageal opening okay and there is an ivc opening and there is an aortic opening but are they only passing no something is passing along with them for example, apply common sense, esophagus is a part of the gut. Which gut? Foregut. It is going from the thorax to the abdomen. What else could be with the foregut? The nerve which supplies the foregut, the midgut, and that is coming from the brain. So the nerve is coming from above and that is going along with the esophagus, has to go supply the stomach, the liver, the jejunum, the ileum, the parts of the colon also. That is the both side vagus nerve. And if you know the portal hypertension, if you know the esophageal varices, you will realize that the lower end of the esophagus, it does also see blood from the portal circulation, that is the left gastric artery, esophageal branches. So in the lower, in the esophageal opening, you will also have the esophageal branches of LGA, left gastric artery. So esophageal opening has not only esophagus, but a couple of other structures. Same with IVC opening is present, blood is going fine, can anything else, can pass, yes. A phrenic nerve passes only one side only one side which phrenic nerve would it be apply your common sense this is the heart over here right and the right atrium is over here IVC is entering over here phrenic nerve would be of the right side or the left side you got the answer would be of the right side then you have the aortic which is present most posterior aortic opening so anything else passes yes aorta was giving if you remember the previous session blood to the posterior intercostal arteries. So, posterior intercostal arteries will branch of this. Same way the vein would be over there. 
so you have the azygous vein which is draining the posterior intercostal veins that will pass through that but if you remember the whole cardiovascular system simply basic physiology arteries are going veins are coming but not only veins 5 to 10 percent is brought back by the lymphatics so the whole lymphatics of the lower body got the point so thoracic duct also may pass through the aortic opening okay thoracic duct passes and azygous vein many times it passes many times it may pass from here and there here and there meaning by if not through basically the aortic opening the azygous vein may also pierce this cross of the diaphragm but it has to go above azygous vein has to go above that is the whole point so these are the three what the three major openings over here we can find ourselves through the three major openings the other minor openings also just we'll have a word of them what are those minor openings now see over here this was the medial arcuate ligament which arcuate medial upper border swas major the sympathetic chain of ganglia passes why remember this is the midline the vertebral column is over here para vertebral chain of ganglia is which ganglia is sympathetic so obviously this is the sympathetic passes through medial arcuate ligament okay fine this is which rib 12th rib now if you remember then if that is the 10th rib below this passes the 10th intercostal nerve and vessels so if this is the 12th rib below this will pass 12th intercostal nerve and vessels and that are also known as subcostal or it is below the whole uh, rib cage subcostal nerve and vessel so if we go back this is the 12th over here below this will pass the subcostal nerve and vessels and therefore this is what lateral arcuate ligament so later beneath the lateral arcuate ligament you have the subcostal nerve and vessels so medial lateral arcuate ligament then what is left the two crus of diaphragm two crus of diaphragm right and left crus right side was this right crus is slightly more longer you can see the difference in length so it reaches l3 but this will reach on the l2 but does anything pierce the crus of diaphragm yes as i told you as i guess when may pierce but as i guess when is on the right side the left crus will be pierced by hemi as i guess when so if i write over here that the crus of the diaphragm the right crus may be pierced by the as i guess when the left crus will be pierced by the hemi as i guess when anything else yes you we had what we had the sympathetic chain of ganglia but there are some preganglionic sympathetic nerves what are there preganglionic sympathetic nerves remember sympathetic outflow is from t1 to l2 so sympathetic outflow is majorly from inside the thoracic cavity only now what i am saying is listen carefully there are some preganglionic sympathetic nerves which do not relay in the sympathetic chain of ganglia these are known as splanchnic nerves why because splanchnic means viscera they are going to supply the viscera so so they will pierce the crust they will not relay in the sympathetic chain of ganglia they will pierce the crust but they have to relay but where will they relay they will relay around the aorta in the prevertebral ganglia or paravertebral ganglia so like the celiac plexus you have superior mesenteric ganglia you have the renal ganglia the inferior mesenteric plexus all that so this we these will be splanchnic nerves they are medial to sympathetic chain they pierce both sides crust of diaphragm so crust is also pierced by your splanchnic nerves splanchnic nerves remember which splanchnic nerves not all greater lesser least on not the lumbar splanchnic nerves not the sacral splanchnic nerves these will be your greater splanchnic nerve lesser and the least so what do they mean they are meaning by its very simple logic is they are from t5 to t9 this is t10 and 11 t10 t11 this is t12 obviously you can't go below t12 because below t12 you have already enter blood diaphragm so there is no point in piercing that so these pierce of both the right and left side so point clear so I repeat myself if i just repeat myself openings are actually important crust of diaphragm are pierced by the splanchnic nerves fine right crust may be additionally be pierced by zygous vein if it does not pass through the aortic opening left crust pierced by the hemi zygous vein clear okay now apart from this what we have already seen over here also okay come back over here the esophage esophageal opening assisted by vagus nerve and is of visual branches of left gastric artery ivc opening which are by a phrenic nerve right sided aortic opening by thoracic duct and may also be the azygous vein over here 
major opening is minor opening what are the levels these are very very important points for diaphragm diaphragm is a very important topic other things in diaphragm which you should be going through are its embryology it's and then you have the congenital hernias the acquired hernias also these are all the applied aspects the hernias basic anatomy basic concept was this over here that how is the shape of the diaphragm and what are the major openings what passes through it and uh, how is it attached to in our body so i hope you enjoyed the session thank you for your time and all the best